Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV and a new edition of our online interview presentations. And today we have a real specialist out of Lausanne, Claude Bichet, a real stock picker and mining specialist. Claude, good morning to Lausanne. How are you doing? Well, very good. It's still early here in Switzerland, but uh, but you you always um, wake everybody up, so you're fine. <laughs> At least I try to, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, we had some shaky times. Uh, gold, silver prices, uh, really nervous. I mean, some base metal prices made a lot of fun. So we want to talk about markets in general, about precious metals and what's coming up. So let me get the presentation started. And oh, wow, black. So it looks like we're on a funeral. That's quite depressing. <laughs> so what's going on, Claude? <laughs> well, as Rick Rule often says, in the commodity space, either you're a contrarian or you're a victim. And uh, the last time uh, we did an interview, it was more than a year ago. It was just after the oil stock, the oil futures went negative. And I suggested that uh, the oil and oil shares were the ultimate uh, contrarian play. It was the, the, the perfect contrarian play. And I suggested buying oil and oil stocks. And they've, uh, they've done very well. But uh, unfortunately, uh, my little gold and gold stocks uh, has not done as well. So, uh, so it's a, it's a bit depressing. Okay, so yeah. well, basically, the question is, why are gold investors depressed? And the answer is quite easy. In fact, who would not be depressed after an 18-month correction where where gold is down 13.9 percent and uh, the GDXJ is down 43 percent? Point four percent. So, uh, you know, uh, that's it's not it's not fun. Nope. Now, unfortunately, uh, in this bull market, it's not unusual. I mean, after the big run of 2016, we had a, a huge uh, drawdown of 41 percent. And every time we go up, we get smashed back down. So uh, I don't really know what that means. I did not expect expect that volatility uh, for so long. Uh, maybe one interpretation is that maybe, although this bull market started in 2015, maybe we are uh, much earlier in this bull market than I think. So maybe it still is the early stage of this uh, of this emerging bull market. And as the bull market matures, maybe we'll have less depressing uh, drawdowns. But it creates also buying opportunities, I would say. Yes, but uh, but then you have to have the guts. So anyway, um, we would all like our gold uh, stocks to look like that. But maybe maybe we'll have a much longer uh, gold bull market. Uh, maybe it's going to be a 10 year uh, still bull market and we still have a, a long run to go. So why are the, the gold stocks down? You know, it's, of course, the fear of uh, Fed interest rates hike every time. Um, the Fed says that they're going to uh, to hike uh, rates, then gold and gold stocks go down. So we're in a normal pattern. And you know how perverse the, the markets are is that, um, you know, it's always a story of buy the rumor, sell the news. So the day the Fed does the first rate hike, usually gold and silver takes off and and the dollar is down. The other thing is that um, we gold bugs uh, usually we're we're for the same reason we're bullish on gold we're we're very negative on on the everything bubble everything is overvalued the stock market the bond market the real estate market so uh, we 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 are more of the opinion that this cannot continue forever and of course uh, there is uh, some precedent and we have a recency bias in the last breakdown when the stock market collapsed with the COVID crisis in March 2020, um, stocks went down a lot, but gold stocks, which are supposed to protect us, they went down even more. So uh, I think a lot of uh, gold, um, uh, gold investors are afraid of a repeat of 2020. Now, uh, luckily, history is not uh, confirming that. If you look at all the corrections since uh, 1987, uh, of the S and P, and you have them there in the in the blue. Uh, more often than not, gold bullion, the physical gold, went up. Uh, for gold stocks, it's sort of a 50-50 uh, thing. So, 
And, and usually when, when, gold and, when gold stocks and the stock market are, are very high, then they tend to go down at the same time. Now, when the gold stocks are pretty cheap like they are today and the market does correct, then there's, um, there's a pretty good probability that you, you see uh, gold stocks and gold going up in the market, in the market correction. So I give you a few examples. In the big depression of 1929, uh, Homestake, that was the big gold stock at the time, multiplied by 6.2, and, and the Dow, you know, just collapsed. So you see that uh, another example, and maybe we're closer to this today because now we have the oil going up and, and inflation. So in the 72, 73 bear market, uh, which uh, where the S&P went down 48%, the gold stocks were up 189%. So I think we should not be too pessimistic right now. Same thing in 2000, 2002 when the dot-com bubble burst, stock was down 49%, but gold stocks did well. Do you expect okay. also this tech bubble to burst now a bit? Uh, look, um, <clears throat> You know, I've been, I've, I've never thought that this bull market in, in gold, in, in, the, in, in, the, in the s and would last as long as it did. But it looks to me that we might have already started a bear market. I think it's going to be very difficult uh, for the Fed to continue to levitate and to, and to have the, their famous, uh, you know, it was the Greenspan put and then it was the, the, the Yellen put and then the, now it's the Powell put. Uh, these things, they can last, but um, we know that one, one day it doesn't work. So, um, so we'll see. Anyway, what's for, important for us is this gold bull market. Uh, the fundamentals have never been better. I'm not going to go through that because you know the story and we're here to make uh, some money. So the only way to make money is to buy good stocks. But the fundamentals are terrific. The debt is unfortunately still here. And now you have real inflation. Uh, here again, I thought inflation would pick up much earlier, but now it's here. 7% in the US, it's huge. Of course, it'll go down a bit, but I do not believe we're going to go back down to very low inflation as it was the case. Uh, negative interest rates are always good for gold, as you know. And this broad investor, investor pessimism uh, is, you know, shows that we, we, we have to rebound very quickly. The momentum players are all out, the generalists are out, and the gold bugs are on buying strike. But as Ray Dalio says, if you don't own gold, you know neither history nor economics. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> so, so this is the, you know, long-term uh, chart of gold stocks. So, you know, it's gone up and now we have a correction. It's sort of forming a triangle. I hope and believe it's going gonna, it's gonna to resolve itself on the upside. Yeah. We should see in the not too distant future and maybe the first rate hike for the Fed will be the signal. So when you're in a correction in a bull market, whatever bull market, what is the proper investment attitude? Well, I didn't invent anything, it's buy the dip. Everybody knows this, but unfortunately, <laughs> it's, it's so much more difficult to do, you know, when you're there. Uh, because when you see your, a, lot of, a lot of my stocks, you know, are down 50% from the high. I started adding uh, to my long positions in, uh, in September when I thought we had a bottom at, uh, at the Denver Gold Shows. There was very few people there. So I figured, OK, that's a, that's a, a bull signal. And of course, uh, right after I, I said that, uh, I looked good because the, stock, the gold stocks started to go up. And then now it's, it's back down. We're sort of so maybe we're doing a double bottom. What I'm trying to say here is that we know we should buy the dip, but it's always more difficult to do because uh, our port, we feel more nervous. We are less sure of, uh, of the trend. Uh, we don't want to catch a falling knife and so on. So the first stock I would like to recommend is a very, very unusual uh, stock. And I think it has practically no downside here, even if gold does continue to correct. It's an amazing situation. It's called West Vault Mining. So basically, 
it's a fantastic deposit which is economic and it's it's really you're having you have gold in the ground where is it everything is sort of perfect in this stock it's in nevada it has one million ounces it's mostly measured and indicated at a decent grade for for nevada and they have the best shareholder base of any junior 46 percent of the stock is owned by sun valley which is run by the famous investor peter palmetto uh, and this uh, this this is a fantastic organization they they check everything they have metallurgists they have structural geologists they're very very thorough and uh, peter palmetto is the chairman of sun valley this means something because he usually never sits on any board. He's a fund manager. 17% is rougher, uh, great investors. Eric Sprott, 5%, everybody knows him. Conwave, which is run by a fund out of Switzerland, run by Erich Meyer that you know very well. Yes. And he's, he's probably the best in, in Europe. So all this is pretty unusual for a junior uh, gold mining company. Uh, even at $1,400 gold, they would make money, but at today's gold price, the after-tax NPV is $295 million, and the internal rate of return is a stunning 92%. Now, as you all know, uh, uh, I mean, very, very few uh, companies have an IRR of 92%. Uh, the market cap, and that's where the opportunity is, today is that it's only $50 million. You have massive leverage at $2,500 gold. The after-tax NPV is $538 million, which is basically 10 times today's really low valuation. So you expect gold to go to 2,500 soon? Uh, yes, I'm, I think we're in a, you know, um, the, the, the federal, the, the, the central banks have been, you know, printing money like crazy everywhere in, in, uh, in Europe, in the U S yeah. so, so, you know, if, if you would, uh, account, if you, if you would count the, the, the massive, um, money printing and put it in dollar terms, the, the goal could be at twelve thousand $12,000 reflect the increase in the in the m2 money supply i don't expect that but who knows but anyway um we're going we're going much higher what is very unusual also in westfold is that this company is fully permitted now uh jochen you see gold star gold um, uh, gold juniors all the time how many companies in safe jurisdiction have a fully permitted very economic deposit today mm -hmm. not that many <laughs> very very few so who knows maybe this thing can be sort of like a a corner i mean there's no fully permitted economic deposit uh, on top of that they have a they have a new ceo Sandy McVeigh, so hopefully he'll uh, get a little new blood in this and we'll have a little more communication on the company, which should help the, the share price rise. Uh, cash, I made a mistake here, it's not $16 million, it's $6 million. But since they're doing nothing adventurous, they're, they're not spending any money, they are just waiting for gold price to go up and to be able to have a uh, much higher uh, share price. So the cash is $6 million. They're spending about uh, the burn, total burn rate is $1 million per year. So they have a lot of room. So let's talk about our little uh, West Vault in Nevada. Okay, so you're in uh, somewhere in the high desert in Nevada and they have a, a million ounces. Let's say they can, uh, they can only produce 800,000 ounces. At $1,800 gold, that would be $1.4 uh, billion dollars. Now to process, uh, they have low costs, but let's say there's cost overrun, which would not be probably the case, but who knows? Let's say they produce at a thousand dollars. Okay. So to mine the gold out and put it uh, in a vault, it would, it would cost $800 million. So today as a shareholder, we basically have uh, $640 million uh, of sort of bullion in the vault. 
which is 10 times the market cap. So you see there's room for this stock to go up. Now, the reason why I think there's sort of a, a sort of a put here around one or 110 is that um, the stock has been accumulated by very strong hand for the last year. And it's very difficult to accumulate a position at these prices because the market is now cleaned up. So I believe that by buying this, you're sort of like buying gold in the ground or like buying bullion, but you have a base and I don't think it can go much lower. And as the price goes up, then uh, this thing should outperform a lot of gold stocks. And it's very safe because they're not, they're not, you know, they're not going to try and, 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 and find a new deposit and, and dilute the investor to, to death by exploration. They're not going to go in, into production at these ridiculously low gold prices. And um, so it's a very unusual situation. Bon, more tr traditional gold picks. Um, today I'm going to concentrate on an area which is... Um, Gold stocks, which uh, have a lot of growth, but are selling at at a, at value, at a distressed value. Uh, I must tell you that for a stock picker, today's market is just a paradise because you have so many things that are so cheap that you want to buy. Uh, it'll get more difficult when gold will be much higher, but that's another story. Caliber mining market cap is six hundred million dollars. Uh, you have the new market Kirkland Lane dream team that everybody knows about. And just recently, they made an, an amazing acquisition uh, in Nevada. They bought Fiore Gold. I, was, uh, I had a big position in Fiore Gold. I was furious they bought this because Fiore was on my list of uh, potential 10 baggers. And I figured, oh, I'm going to lose, I'm losing this. But, but on the other hand, um, the caliber management is ex extremely good, and uh, you know they have um, they have a lot of cash flow coming from their production. They're making a lot of money, so so it's a much safer bet now for 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 me. Um, in cash, they have a hundred million dollars, and they have no debt. You're going to have news on this stock all year round because they are massively exploring. They're in Nicaragua. Uh, 10 rigs, 80,000 meters of drilling this year. In Nevada, they just took over the company and they've already have five rigs on the ground and they will be drilling 70,000 meters. But the growth profile is fantastic. Okay, so uh, last year they, they, they produced 182,000 ounces. Uh, it will go this year to 230,000 ounces. And by 2025, you're, you should be at 300,000 ounces. And although you have this fantastic growth, uh, it's selling at 60% discount to peers. So the enterprise value of, uh, for the 21 production is $1,480 versus peers at $3,800. So you're buying growth at a discount. Yeah, it's also on my buying list, I can tell you. <laughs> well, uh, I, you know, the, the stock has really corrected quite a lot. In fact, that's really interesting. Um, you know, we, we've had, I mean, it's always the same thing in the stock market. When an, when a, an acquiring company buys something, the stock gets slaughtered, okay? So the stock just went down 30% just because they were doing a smart acquisition. Now, uh, I, I tell you, this market is not very smart and uh, <laughs> and you should take, take advantage of that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's been a lot of shorts. They had 15 million uh, uh, share, uh, shares short. Uh, the shorts are now covering, uh, so the arbitrage is, is, is over. So I expect the stock to rebound uh, really now, anytime. Uh, since we're in, we're in Nicaragua, I, I, uh, I, I maybe, uh, maybe in fact, you can uh, talk about uh, Condor because uh, Mark Child, the CEO, is brave. He's now in Switzerland, uh, although we are at the peak of the pandemic. So at least this guy is, is brave. So maybe you, I think you saw him very, very, uh, very recently. So maybe you should be doing the pitch on Condor. There it is. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, Condor Gold is definitely, it's, it's, to me, it's a no-brainer. Also, uh, the same thing like with the other um, stocks you said, uh, the downside is extremely limited because the stock is way too cheap. And uh, I think they will have, uh, yeah, by uh, end of March, uh, a new um, resource estimate and also the feasibility study will come out uh, by end of March. And uh, so from that perspective, they are going now into the project finance. And uh, really, I do not see any trouble there because we talk about something around 120, 130 million uh, dollars to really bring this favorable project into production. And then you have so much upside for the future because uh, this is only for the open pit, but they have underground potential. They have satellite open pits, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I see when they when they start production, they could easily go up to 150,000 ounces per year and uh, really finance this then out of cash flow also. And uh, what I really like is also the cost situation is uh, really manageable, uh, meaning the AIC, I expect them something around eight, $900. Yeah, I'm, I'm more a little bit conservative here. Uh, so the margins are favorable. I like Nicaragua as a mining place, to be honest. Yeah? Some people might think, oh, there are still Sandinistas and that's all a bit more on the communism side. But what I really hear is also from Calibot, the, the country is super mining pro. And that's exactly what you need because they need taxes, they need jobs, yeah, and they need to do something. And if you believe it or not, gold was the largest export item last year of Nicaragua. So... I think it's a fantastic story. Absolutely. So uh, listen to the last interview on Commodity TV uh, by Jochen Steiger. He did a very good job interviewing the CEO. Well, it's clear. Look, $70 million for a permitted, uh, um, a permitted mine that uh, can do an open pit of 1.2 million ounces is ridiculously uh, cheap. Mm -hmm. On Nicaragua, the facts are very simple. Uh, you have a lot of very successful companies in Nicaragua, uh, Caliber permitted, Condor permitted very recently. So you can do business in Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's for Condor. Here again, the stock has corrected a lot. It's a buying opportunity now. Okay, Minera Alamos. Um, so this is an amazing growth story. And uh, my title here is Double, Double, Double. <laughs> You have one of the best development teams. They, they, are, they have a fantastic, stellar, um, uh, um, they have put four mines into production in the last 13 years, all very successfully and very cheaply. They're going to do exactly the same. So they started, uh, they started the production of, in Santana last year. In 22, they will be reaching a commercial production. In 23, they're, they'll be putting into production a second mine, Cerro de Oro, and then in 24, a third mine, Fortuna. So who knows? Maybe by 25, 26, they'll have four mines operating. Who knows? Anyway, what is certain is the double, double, double. In 22, they'll be producing 35,000 ounces. In 23, they double to 70 to 65,000 ounces. And by 2024, they should be around 110,000 ounces. They have $16 million and no debt. So they can increase production without any dilution. And it's, uh, it's, it's quite amazing. Uh, market it's, capital. it's a production financed already. I mean, in yeah. the, the, the build of the mines. Yes, everything is. Uh, and, and, and it's, and if I give you the the, <laughs> the capex, uh, they they've put this first mine into production for ten million dollars. I mean, it's just unbelievable. These guys operate on a shoestring, but it works, and they've done it already four times, and it's their fifth mine to put in production. They know what they're doing. So Minera Alamos, double, double, double. Now I want to talk about Kuya Silver, very tight structure, 49 million uh, shares, fully diluted for a market capitalization of only $50 million. So this, you can understand, we're talking uh, 10 bagger potential. 
They already have 14 million ounces of silver equivalent, 5.8 indicated, 8 inferred. They have great shareholders. Management has skin in the game, 21.6%. Eric Sprott, 4.3%. Sprott Asset Management and the famous uh, fund of Crescat. Uh, you should have now a re-rating to production because they're going in, they're, they're, um, they're, they're going to be um, in the ramp up phase by the end of 2022. By 2023, they should be producing 2.5 million ounces. And by 2024, or 2025, they could easily produce 4 million ounces. Now, 4 million ounces of silver production, you understand that we're talking maybe, you know, a market cap of $400 million. And today, it's $50 million market cap. So there's huge potential. And um, the finance is very, they need only $15 million to finance. Uh, they have no debt, so there'll be minimal dilution. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, on top of that, uh, Quinton Henning, the famous geologist from Prescott, uh, is their geologic advisor. And I talked to him recently. He believes that there is district scale potential. So there's huge upside on, on the exploration. Mm -hmm. Now, why is this stock so cheap? Well, it's very simple. It's because they're in uh, Peru. But, you know, when you're talking about um, unusual jurisdiction or not perfect jurisdiction, if you have the proper team, then you're okay. So basically I prefer to be with Mark Bristow in Congo than with a band management in, uh, in the U S. Um, and, uh, if, uh, if you believe that, um, that, uh, permitting is so easy in, in the States, then, uh, you can buy rice gold, which, uh, is uh, at you know less than twenty million dollar market cap, and and they could very well um, get a permit in California, so that could be another ten back. That's you know, that's also yeah. an adventure, California. Yes, <laughs> right. Yeah. So anyway, well, Peru, uh, they know how to um, this uh, this management company knows how to operate in Peru. Mm -hmm. uh, they got the EIA in twenty twenty, and they got just recently their mill construction agreement. So that's a very very positive. So. I believe that Kuya Silver, that has corrected hugely, can um, can go back up and be a four million ounce producer. Yep. So here are a few ideas uh, where you can have a huge growth profile, but buying stocks at a depressed value price is uh, rather unusual. But uh, that's what the give, the market gives us, so we might as well take advantage of that. Okay, that's it for me. Okay, super. Thank you very much. So I stopped this here. Thanks, Claude. Uh, that was uh, really, really interesting. I must say, I'm also a shareholder of uh, Kuya Silver. I paid a little bit more uh, because I participated in the last financing, but uh, I will average down definitely. That is also for sure because I fully trust the management and I think uh, they can really provide uh, next year a beautiful silver, silver gold production, I should say, because a little bit gold is also associated here. And uh, I, I, I I do not see Peru as negative as the it, it is in the media, to be honest. I mean, it's a 500 year old mining uh, place and uh, we always had hassles in politics in Chile, in Peru, whatever. And uh, finally, what counts is uh, that uh, the communities and the people who need the jobs, that they are fine, that everything works. And yeah, finally, things will work out uh, positively, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Can you give us uh, to the end maybe your prognosis uh, for silver and gold for this year, next year? <laughs> well, um, whatever I say, I'm going to be wrong. I, I'm not. I'm not too good at that. Uh, um, what's important is is to be disciplined. So when there's a correction, you buy. Uh, you, you're in a bull market, so any mistakes you make, normally you should be bailed out. But uh, I expect this this year that we see new highs on gold, that we go above the the recent highs. And once once that gets going, who knows? You know, the potential is huge. Of course, silver always goes up uh, more than than gold, so it's easy for silver, you know, to go back around thirty dollars. Uh, so you you understand what that could mean for Kuya silver, for example, mm -hmm. but also for other you know uh, for other silver. Uh, 
companies like yeah. you know first majestic has huge bet at the silver uh, endeavor silver is a great stock to own it's yeah. very max cheap. silver also quite cheap yes of course yeah max mm. great great quality yeah. super okay. you should have so, thank you very much Great presentation, great insight, and uh, I fully agree with your thoughts. And I will check out also West uh, Vault and Alamos. And uh, yeah, really interesting, I must say. And uh, yeah, hope to see you soon. Please, more of that. That was outstanding. Thank you very much and all the best to Lausanne. Okay. Great. Thank you, Thank Johan. You. Bye. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Claude Beger with a beautiful overview on markets and also stock picks. He is a stock picker and mining specialist out of Lausanne. And uh, yeah. Make up your own mind, of course. I think uh, what he said is very compelling and makes absolutely sense. Um, and yeah, check out those companies. Thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Switzerland. Bye-bye.